<clears throat> one, two, one, two. All right, let's roll. let's roll. Welcome. Welcome. You're listening to the Saddle Up Podcast, where we discuss everything related to UTRGB athletics, past or present. We'll catch up with old teammates, friends, and take you down memory lane with exclusive interviews. This is the Saddle Up Podcast, the voice of your covered walkway streets. So dope. This is going to be awesome. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. From Bronx Village to the Fieldhouse, we'll cover it all. Hell yeah, dude. Carpe Daniel. So saddle up and let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Saddle up, partner. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Saddle Up Podcast. I'm with your co-host, your main man, G Garza. G, who do we have in the house today? Who is our special guest? Man, JG. <laughs> JG. Joe That's Goldberg. right. We got Jonah Goldberg in the house. And for those of you who don't know Jonah, Jonah is a staple in the athletic department, the admin. Um, Jonah, what exactly is your role? And thank you so much for being on the show today. Well, I think my job is to keep two pieces of paper together. I think that's the closest thing we do. But so I am the senior associate athletic director for communications and championships. And believe it or not, that fits on one line on a business card. I was going to say, does that fit on one? Do you have to like staple the business cards together or well, what, how, how does that work? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I was worried about that at first. I was like, I don't know if I can accept <laughs> this promotion because that's going to look awkward. But then I realized nobody uses business cards anymore. Right. You just like, Hey, what, yeah. what are you, what, what's exactly. your, exactly. And how long have you been with the school as the senior vice president of whatever the title was? I, I'll have to I go like back. I like that title. Yeah, I'll be a vice president. So I, this go around, I've been here for 11 and a half years. And then I, I also had to go around in 07, 08. So I initially came down to the Rio Grande Valley right out of college to broadcast minor league ball. And then my first winter, I hooked up with UTPA to broadcast basketball games, all the men's games, uh, all the, any women's home game that I could be present at, and then actually one road game too, a uh, handful of baseball games. And then at one point I was also doing part-time in the communications office. And then uh, it, for a few years in between, I was continuing to do minor league baseball at the White Wings in Harlingen. I was working with the Vipers for a few years. And then uh, November 18th, 2011, I returned to UTPA in a full-time capacity this time in athletic communications, and I have been here ever since, and it has been glorious. You know, it kind of started as a mostly a pure media relations job, and I was told when I started by then athletic director Chris King, you know, you, as long as you get the essential responsibilities done, this job can be what you want it to be, and so it, it evolved a lot over time. I know I've I had been broadcasting before. I've ended up broadcasting again, and now I'm, you know, we we started TV shows, and we've we've done so much stuff that yeah. really pushed the envelope. That I feel like the best way to describe my job is other responsibilities as assigned, or as unassigned. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. That makes, and you know what, you you guys, I've heard you on TV before, um, call in the games, um, and you do a a great job um has that always been like one of your passions growing up where did you grow up like I, you know you're not from the valley but where did you grow up so i grew up in new york okay and growing up i wasn't actually a huge sports guy it just it wasn't something that i, I spent a lot of time with i was a yankees fan you know casually um uh, and i and i had a few other teams that i was casually a fan of like i i liked michael jordan i didn't necessarily care about the team so i was a bulls fan and then i was a nothing fan and the bulls again and nothing then washington and it was, it was tough uh just changing like that and and a few and a few other teams that i, I didn't follow them that closely and then everything changed in 2000 because the Yankees played the Mets in the World Series. Yeah. And when you're going to high school in New York and that's happening, that battle lines are drawn. Yeah. Is ev that's everybody yeah. Up. So I was like, wow, this is awesome. And I got really caught up in it. And of course the Yankees won because they're the greatest. <laughs> and I just I decided at that point that I didn't want to just be a casual fan anymore. I was really enjoying this. So like I wanna I want to catch every game. But back then 
you know, a standard cable package was 29 channels where I was growing up. And that, that included the TV guy channel uh, and channel yeah, yeah. that didn't necessarily have any. <laughs> and of course there's no channel one. So you really don't have that many channels. And the Yankees were on a premium channel, which we didn't get. So I started listening on the radio. And about a month into the 2001 season, I was like, wow, this is the greatest job in the world. These guys are getting paid to get excited about sports. Yeah. How do I do that? And, and yeah, yeah, that kind of just started me down this road of figuring it out where I ended up building a website in high school to house broadcasts of baseball and softball. And I did one my junior year and then a few more my senior year. My junior year was literally into a tape recorder and then I had to re-record it into the computer. And by my senior year, my dad had gotten a laptop, which that was exciting. So uh, he, he let me bring it to the games and I recorded straight into the laptop. I didn't have internet access. So I still had to first post it when I got home. So it wasn't live, but it was just, it was cool uh, yeah. to, be able to do that. And then, so I looked at schools for broadcast, I ended up at Boston University and I was a part of 248 game broadcasts of wow. soccer, hockey, basketball, lacrosse, and softball. And I also got to intern for a summer with the Hyannis Mets, now Harbor Hawks of the Cape Cod Baseball League, where I got to do a bunch of games for them. And uh, so from there, I just started applying to jobs all across the country. And, and you, found, you found UTRGV. Yeah. Now, was it Pan Am when you came? It was, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, that's, I mean, that's, that's all. I mean, obviously when G and I played, um, it was Pan Am. What year did that, what did, what year did that transition happen around 10, 11? Where, so where my first basketball season was 07, 08, which, so Tom Schubert was the head coach of the men's okay. team. Yeah. That was the year we won the independent championship and gave ourselves rings. And I still have mine as a big bronc with all sorts of, jewels hey jonah uh we'll send you our ring sizes here in a little bit <laughs> we well, have already the letters what, what, what are you talking about well, you it, was, know. it was a, a package like the letter with the ring from that hey radio on the side and i was like, I, like it was <laughs> it was such an honor to be included in that because i really wasn't expecting it and i remember at the end of the year after they had clinched the championship. So it might've been before the season was over. I, I was walking through the field house and the teams around and uh, I didn't really know what was going on. They say, Hey, Jonah, get over here. And I'm like, yeah, what's up? I'm like, yeah, show us your finger. And I was like, why? Like we're sizing you for a ring. I'm like, nice. <laughs> walked right into it. Now was yeah. that when they had, was uh, that year, was that when they had, um, gosh, Ben, um i cannot remember his last name he was an yeah. assistant yeah uh ben johnson was ben johnson yeah. yes and then the the other head coach i mean the other assistant was uh lance madison correct so i wasn't here for lance okay uh, that, that year it was uh bruce collins and brad enright were the other assistants okay and then ben johnson yeah now ben johnson's now the head coach at minnesota so yeah uh and lance madison ended up coaching my kid in juco so no kidding yeah 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 scott street who was the ad at pan am before i believe chris king um hmm. yeah scott was there at the time he, when I was he's there. now the ad at um Lamar State, Port Arthur, there. So he hired Lance Madison. Yeah. So oh, wow. small world. Wow. Small world. So what player? What key players were were on that team? Oh, we had the best backcourt. Uh, we had Paul Stoll running the point. He's and Paul Stoll. Stoll. That's right. He did it on one foot for most of the season. We were at Missouri State for a tournament, and he goes down hurt. And I remember just thinking, oh, oh goodness, what's what now? And Jim Lancaster's on the trail. Uh, he was my roommate, which was that's a whole nother. <laughs> that was awesome. Got to bring you out for another episode. You and Jim on the show together. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> so he he taped up Paul in some unique way and did other. He did stuff I couldn't explain it, but somehow he played the next day and had a, a, approached a triple double. And I, I mean, it was at this point where like. I remember Bruce Collins remarking, if Jim wasn't on the trip, Paul doesn't play. Like, 
he he played hurt the rest of the year. Like I always just said, yeah, he's playing on one foot, and it didn't stop him. He nearly averaged a triple double anyway, and then. Well, I'm glad he could fix Paul because he couldn't fix G because G never got to see the court. So yeah, he... and, and I blame it on injury, as, of course. <laughs> I, I, and the injury occurred at a nightclub on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> down in McAllen, so but you know what let's not go there let's Nothing not go there you've got your you've got your five steals man that's all that's, good so that's, yeah. we had dexter shankel brian oh, yeah dex yeah dex, dex. dex shot like 50 percent from behind the arc yeah uh, what a defender legend yeah legend. he had this block shot at northwestern that i will never forget that one of the Northwestern guys, he's on a he's on a fast break. He's by himself. He is gonna lay it in or dunk it, and there's nobody to stop him. And out of nowhere, Dex comes running in from behind and swats it away. This guy was taller than him by like wow. six inches, didn't stop him. Dex just got airborne and said, Nope. That's that heart. That's Dex has always had heart like that. Like I, you know, we, I've played against Dex in like men's league games and stuff, and he's he's amazing. So when you moved down here from Boston and you were applying for all these jobs, did you were you married at the time? I mean, I see you on Facebook. You've got the kids and you happily married. Like, did you meet somebody from down here, or did you kind of migrate them from back home and say, "Hey, I'm living here now. You want to come check it out?" You know, none so. of the above. So, okay. I, I when I was working for the Vipers, I was traveling with the team during the uh, 2010-11 season. And we had a series in Austin on a Thursday, Saturday. So Friday night, I'm like, oh, what am I going to do tonight? I finished my work at about 5.15. What year was this? This this was February of 2011. Who was that? Was was Taylor Jenkins the head coach for the? Chris the... Finch. It was Chris Finch. It was after yeah. uh, Nick or before it Nick. Before Nick. It was before it was Nick. Before Nick. Okay. Nick was at Iowa at the time. Because I was yeah. I was with Austin the 12 season, the 11 12 season. So I, I was under you. I was under Taylor Jenkins. He was my boss. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so Nick Nurse was the head coach for the Vipers. And um yeah, that was a – yeah. We lost to them in the uh we lost. It was. It was. It was great. So okay. So I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just no, trying good. to put the, together the the time frame. So you meet so, you meet the girl in Austin on a road trip to yeah. to go play the Toros. Yeah, Matt. Exactly. This is more important than your than your G League stories. Okay. I was we, just I was just trying to connect the time frame, man. That was all I was trying to do. We well, need to know. How is. That's more important. Yes. So go yeah. ahead. So you're in Austin for a for a road trip and. And then I suddenly realized, hey, I bet you, I bet you there are Jews in Austin. So I look up and there's a synagogue near the hotel. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to services tonight. So I go and she is sitting over my right shoulder. Wow. Man. Like an yeah. angel that she is. That's yeah. amazing. And I was yeah. wearing my Vipers championship ring. And uh, I have a lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see what I mean? You see what I mean? Our luck will change if we just wear a ring, man. Like, yeah. So, send us a couple of rings, Jonah. Come on, man. <laughs> Using all of them at one so time. Did you, how did you? What did you do? You just tell her, "Hey, look, I'm in. I'm in town for one night. Like, you want to hang out? Like, I'll leave you tickets for the 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 game. Like, how did no, you?" No, that's the funny part. I pretty much, I almost blew it because. Uh, so the rabbi sees the ring and he comes over and he's like hey, you're not from here. Who are you? What are you doing here? And I tell him. And so then at the end of the service, he makes this big deal. Oh, we've got Jonah visiting from the Rio Grande Valley. You know, uh, wow. you know, is your, is your team any good? And I, I hold up my, my hand. I'm like, well, we are the defending champs. <laughs> and uh, so after that, everybody needs to talk to me, right? And so I met everybody there, including... Uh, so what I actually... My wife isn't even the first person I spoke to in the uh, young single female category. The first person asked, so what position do you play? And I said, oh, I'm the starting center. And when she believed me, I decided this wasn't for me. That wasn't, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm 6'2 on a good day. Let's. Uh... You got to be around somebody that, I mean, in your business, you, you're you in the sports world, right? So you've got you've to have somebody that enjoys watching sports or being around sports is like you are. So, yeah. Oh, exactly. And then, so one of the congregants actually opened their home for dinner because every, 
the idea being everybody should have somewhere to go on Shabbat. I didn't have somewhere to go, nor a way of getting to that house. But there was a retired woman from McAllen who, who was moved to Austin, who was obsessed with the idea that I was from the Valley. So she offered me a ride. So I got in a car with a stranger and went to a different stranger's house. And while I was there, my wife, my now wife, walked in and uh, she actually didn't say anything about the ring initially. She first said, I like your baritone voice. And I was like, oh, hello. And so we ended up talking for a couple hours. And uh, she was listening to that baritone voice for a couple hours. Yeah. And when it was when it was time to go, she was like, so, you know, they have a lot of good imp improv in Austin. Do you want to go to show tomorrow? And she asked me out. And I was like, oh, well, you know, we've got the game tomorrow at uh, like 12 or something. And you know, then we're getting on the bus and going home. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember I get on the bus and I, I told Coach Finch about this. And he said, do you want to just stay and go hang out with her? And, and I was like, I, I mean, she lives five hours away. What are the odds that this is going to become a thing anyway? Amazing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I went yeah. Amazing. <laughs> well that wow. so let me ask you this um we'll get into the we'll get into g's questions right so you you bring your wife down you got the kids now and where where do the goldbergs go to eat like what is the favorite spot to eat in the valley well now i mean you know the kids it's what's kid friendly right it's places that sell tuna fish and mac and cheese and pizza so <laughs> Uh, you know, I, we really like our, our kids love Jersey Mike's. Um, yeah. they love getting the, the tuna sandwich. Actually, it's funny. So my daughter will get the tuna. She loves the tuna. My son wants a cheese sandwich. I'm like, okay. So, it, but they, they really like it. And they also really like taco Palenque because it has the indoor playground and they like the tacos, which is good. I like the burrito. So, you know, it's perfect. It works out. Watch them yeah. play. I don't think <laughs> I've ever eaten a taco Palenque prior to like 11 p.m I, that's the thing i don't you know well you're not trying to go in the playground so it's okay i don't uh, i think they would frown on that you'll be, you'll be, be, be surprised jonah what happens, what happens after 11 p.m with matt Pong, with Patty p but you know you I can't hope you you, at least take your shoes off don't be an animal <laughs> at least take the shoes off oh that's hilarious yeah so <clears throat> okay so taco p and Jersey Mike's, um, on your day off, right? On your day off, and you don't have any commitments. You don't have to come into work. It's just like, hey, you've got this Saturday or Sunday or whatever. What do you do? And don't say work. Like, what do you, how do you get away from the grind? Like, like what do you like, do? Like Jonah time. End of it, like Jonah time. Not family time. Family time for you right now is, I mean, of course, you know, away from yeah. work. But what, yeah, what I mean, is that's what, 7 a.m. to 8 30 p.m. So I mean once I get yeah, yeah. <laughs> so outside of family time, uh, I mean at that point it's finally get to sit down, breathe, and maybe watch Star Trek. Nice. <laughs> wow, we got it. We got it. Star Trek, baby. <laughs> oh so man. you're a Trekkie versus Star Wars? Like you like yeah. Star Trek more than Star Wars, or what what does that look like? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We, one of them it shows what a utopia could look like if everybody, you know, got along and what the future, what a great vision of the future. The other one tells you the difference between good and bad by the color of their lightsaber. You know, I, I like Star Wars. I really do. But one of them's a little deeper than the other. Yeah. Joan, yeah. Joan, for the sake of, of the 1% population well maybe less than a pop percent population that views this show we may have to cut that out from the editing with the editing. <laughs> <laughs> from the yeah from the five or six people that watch this we may lose half we may lose half our viewers so <laughs> thanks i appreciate that jonah you're, you're cutting into our, our audience size I'm right. I try. So, um <laughs> <laughs> so you you hang awesome. out watch star trek that's your that's your day off what is the, one of the favorite places to like take the kids is it the beach like what you know what is what do you guys do for fun you know as far as a family time because 
I mean, your kids were have been raised here, so obviously yeah. they're familiar with it. And this is all kind of they know. They're small, but what do what do you guys like doing on just family weekends and just kind of hanging out? Do they like going to the games? They do, uh, though it's funny. So they went to our last Friday baseball home game, and they came a little early. And you know, my son is only four, so he doesn't last very long. So they came yeah. early enough because they wanted to be able to say hi to me before I went on the air, and yeah. then. Uh, after the first pitch is thrown on cue my son says i want to go home now <laughs> uh, he's like, and my daughter's like but i want to stay i want to watch yeah so there was uh, a little complaining there <laughs> they really like games at the field house because they like running up and down the bleachers yeah how old are they jonah uh six and four. Oh man that, that's great that's years probably- for yeah, that's a beautiful age, but it's also you have to corral them, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, he's sitting down for for way too long, you know. Always then, ask like, hey, you know, always do that hard count. Like, hey, I bet you can't uh, run and bring dad this piece of paper from over there. Go one, two, <laughs> three, you know, and just get them to. Well, what I like is playing hide and seek, and you say, "All right, you guys hide." <laughs> Make sure you're real quiet. <laughs> and then they start, Dad, come and find us. Where are you? And then uh, they usually won't wait that long. And they'll come out and be like, why didn't you find us? We're like, you just hid too well. You just hid too well. Yeah. Really? <laughs> so so I want to piggyback, piggyback that, uh, Jonah. I know Matt's talking about the Valley, but um, I've been to New York a couple of times. And I'm curious to see if, if we have the same favorite restaurant in new york we I, I maybe yeah, well it's too many right but i've been there a few times and and i've been introduced to a lot of restaurants but i have i have a favorite one and we're uh, waiting. go ahead <laughs> yeah i don't know okay jonah's got to tell us his favorite one though in new york i mean for out of Man. so many right uh your go-to if 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 okay if, so they, my, my my favorite restaurant if, if i could only eat at one place i'd I pro God. So I'd probably end up at Ben's Delicatessen. Wow, Ben's Delicatessen. Yeah, that's is- not what you're gonna say, right, G? That's not your spot. You know what? That's a local spot, man. Do you, you put there's no way yeah. I would Yeah, G- that's local. That's for G a local. and I we G and I've had this conversation actually just last week where growing up the, the Olive Garden and the Red Lobster were the five star restaurants that <laughs> we grew up. I mean, everything you know everything's local right the places where you grow up those are the places you want to go yeah. i mean you know i i love ben's there are there are only a few of them there is actually one in the city not too far from Times square but uh you know i go to the one long island and it's a great place to get a good sandwich and right. some matzo ball soup and uh that that's of course that's for lunch or dinner probably dinner because i'm gonna have breakfast at bagel boss get, get my <laughs> bagel box and cream cheese or a bagel with whitefish and maybe munster or some veggie tuna and then uh, dinner or lunch, I guess I'll go to a pizzeria. And in that case, there are a few. There's this one called Cherry with actually I think went out of business, but it, oh, they had the best slice. The oh, yeah. best slice. Gee, where was the spot you were going to name? Well, it's kind of like a, a tourist spot because you have to go. But we go every time we go to New York. My wife loves it. It's Carbone. We love oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Car- yeah. Car- Carbone. We've been in Vegas yeah they've got one in the aria there's one in the aria in vegas yeah. but uh, we went to the one in new york and we ran into the, their rookie year they were just entering the nba they were sitting right next to us with trey young and mo bamba <laughs> nice. and i i had i had a few a, a few red wines and i and i i just went over to their table i said hey man real cool hey man the future of the nba is is in good hands and then i walked away What'd they say? I don't know. I walked away. I didn't get a response. <laughs> I just, you know, Mr. Cool, I just said it and then walked away, you know, because uh, I really say after that. So, yeah, well, but, Mo, Bamba, it, Mo Bamba hardly plays for the Lakers and Trey Young is talking about, you know, he's going to get <laughs> going to get traded. So that was a great that was a great one. Way to foreshadow everything, G. That's all. Awesome. That's all me, Matt. That's all me. <laughs> And, you know, speaking of, this is a great question. This is the first time we've asked anybody this question, Jonah. Who is the most famous person in your f- cell phone right wow. now? Rudy Tomjanovich. 
Whoa. Oh, that's man. amazing. <laughs> I'm clapping on that one, man. That Rudy T. Oh, Rudy my goodness. T. Never <laughs> underestimate the heart of a champion. Like, never. Wow. Yep. Jonah, could you put him on FaceTime right now? I'm kidding. <laughs> You'll probably be like, wait, who are you again? Who are you? <laughs> but I, I I spoke to him once, or I guess twice, because I set up the interview time and then I just kept his mm-hmm. number, assuming it's the same. This was when I was with the Vipers, we were hosting a Rockets Celtics exhibition game. Yeah. It was the first yeah. time the NBA had been here since the 70s. Mm-hmm. And Rudy T had played in the most recent game. Uh, when the Rockets played the Spurs at the field house. So I needed, to, I wanted to talk to somebody who participated in that game to try and learn more about the NBA's history and what it was like. And so I called him, I, I went through the Lakers and to get, he was a scout for them at the time to get his number and they actually gave it to me. And uh, so he, he actually remembered it pretty well. You know, at first he was like, I don't really remember the game. And then I kind of described it, told him the score, what happened, how many points he got. And I said, yeah, it was your only exhibition game to coming back from a back injury. He's like, right, when I broke my back, right, yeah, I remember. And then all of a sudden he just spout, starts spouting off stuff. And wow. Like, oh. So he, he liked playing at the field house. I never Did knew it? that there was an exhibition played there. in the. There field were house. several. In fact, yeah. Otto Moore brought the Phoenix Suns a couple times. That's right. This is, a, right. this is the first right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is why Matt likes to say saddle up exclusive. Yeah, right here. saddle up TMZ exclusive right here. This is like <laughs> a lot of people learn the first time. Yeah. Did, did, uh, didn't Rudy T get, um, didn't he get his jaw broken by somebody? Yeah, he, um, by Garfield. Um, yeah. I think it was his name. Garfield. It ended, didn't it end his career? I'm not sure. No. Okay. If you know, then leave the comments down below. Yeah. If you, yeah. Uh, if you know the answer, but answers. And yeah. I need Rudy T's cell phone too. It was Kermit you... Washington. Kermit, that was his name. Kermit I was saying Wash- Garfield. Yeah. This I is joke. why you do play by play, and me and G do a half-ass podcast. So. <laughs> no, it's yeah, <laughs> rhyme. We have Jonah on. This is nothing. It, this is this is full ass. This ain't half-ass. We got Jonah. <laughs> Goldberg on. Jonah, what is your uh I know that you've been, you know, you've been what UT UTPA, UTRGV, what 13 years now? Yeah. Is that uh what what's is up? the uh what's your what's your goal, man? I mean, obviously you're pretty talented. I mean, you know, getting to the highest level would be pretty awesome. I mean, do you have do you this have this is goals? the highest level, G. He made the podcast. Well, get the saddle up is the highest level. I understand that, you know, interview wise, but uh but what are your what are your goals past the uh, UTRGV? And, and nothing against, you know. I mean, shout out to Chase and the job that they're doing and whatnot. But, I mean, do you have goals beyond uh, UTRGV? Why? Well, I have why, connections. Why? No, I, and I'm serious because, you know, people are yeah. always looking. The grass is always greener, right? People are always like, oh, the next job, the next job. I have to go work at a Power 5 because that will make me, right. what, a better person and it'll increase my value or something? Why? You know, I, I don't. If, if I end up working at one one day because for some reason I need to move to another place, okay, fine. I, I, I will be very happy with that. But I'll also yeah. be very happy to be here. You know, everybody's always looking for that next move when they're in college athletics. And I don't know if it's because they really want the next move or because they feel like they have to, right? Yeah. There's this pressure that you're, and I've been asked that question so many times, like, don't you want to work at a power five? And I'm like, oh, I mean, maybe, like if it happens, cool, but- well- at the same time, I could be dealing with some incredible media relations messes that you see from schools around the country, right? Whereas <laughs> instead, you know, I, no. I, yeah. And who knows? Been- will I be happy there? Like, just because it's a higher level doesn't mean I'm going to be happy. I know I'm happy here. Yeah. yeah. My theory on life is if you find a place where you can be happy in every facet of your life, in your work, in your personal, and everything else, put the resume away. Just be happy. You're allowed. Like, you don't have to move around. Like, I love you, TRGV. I love the Valley. I love being here. The things that we are doing are incredible. They like, are. Where we where we come from, from the wooden bleachers uh, when I first got here and from the independence to now, you know, we are contenders in a, the Western Athletic Conference, one of the most storied conferences around to think that we are completely changing 
the way that people are going to look at us from a facility standpoint, sinking $85 million in the facilities to think that we're yeah. able to expand our programs. Like we are part of transforming the Valley between yes. us, the medical school and just really ETRGV as a whole. This university has improved so much academically over the years. I mean, the, the rankings, the US News and World Report were constantly going up. The way that we're able to have students graduate with some of the least debt in the country. It is just so impressive and it's inspiring to be a part of you know, can you go somewhere else and be happy? Sure, I would assume so. But if you know you're happy somewhere, my don't change. Is, yeah, happy. and those places, I mean, we're wrapping up, but those places don't have Taco Palenque with the inside playground for the kids. <laughs> let tell, so let, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, Jonah. That passion, yep. that fidelity, commitment is the reason why UTRGV is where it's going and where it's at and where it's going yep. right now. Because of guys like you, man. We really appreciate that. And, um, you better not move to any other university. I wasn't talking about university. I was talking about professional sports, man. You better. Oh, there ain't no other there was a time in my life, right? Like straight out of college, my goal was to be a not only the voice of the New York Yankees, but to win the Ford C. Frick Award and be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Like that was a very specific goal of mine. And you know, after a period of time, you start to think like. Do I need that? Do I need to be on the road from February through October every single year? And then, right, yeah. you know, I have a family. Do I want to be away from them that kind of period of time? Not really. So that that really took the pro part out of it. And I, I started to realize, you know, I'm really actually just happy here. So, well, you're on your way. I will tell you this, and we're wrapping up. We're, you're on yeah. your way. You've got an independent ring from Coach Schubert. And we can figure out somebody to help you get into the UTRGV Hall of Fame. And then you're good to go, right? And so, <laughs> Jonah, Jonah, last question, man. I know we got to wrap up, but last question, I got to ask it. Gee, silly question. This is the silly question. Jonah, would I, with your insight and your knowledge and your intelligence, man, I need to ask this question. If you had one superpower, what would it be and why? Ooh. <laughs> I. I'd want to be able to fly. And, but a caveat when I catch people when they're falling, or if I make them fly with me, they don't, you know, get really sick or, you know, get shredded into a million pieces, as would really happen <laughs> if, if that was possible. Cause, you know, traveling, I have family, you know, in different parts of the country. My wife has family in different parts of the country. So we, when we have to travel, you know, it's heavy, you know, and yeah. that's, that's the hardest part. So if I could just, you know, fly without getting anybody sick or injured, then that's you know, what I it would be. May put everybody in the car, pick up the car, make that probably easier, and just go. There you go, Jonah <laughs> Superman Goldberg. We got it. You heard it. Here. <laughs> I'm that's changing. Enough. I am changing your name in my phone to Superman Goldberg right there. <laughs> nice. like, that is amazing, Jonah. You are such a delight. Thank you so much. You've always been a, a friend of the show. You've been a friend of mine ever since I've known you uh, and gotten to know you. Um, so thank you so much for, for, for being with us today and sharing your insight and you, you'll make that hall of fame one day. I promise. So <laughs> appreciate it. Wait, don't give away that G I'm coming for it. <laughs> I've got the, the G sign waiting for you. You, you got to take a picture too, Jonah. When you, when he comes to get it, take a picture and we'll we post will. it on, on Facebook. There it is folks. <laughs> wow i'm picking it up put it in my garage man i'm there i'm i'm, I'm going over tomorrow <laughs> that's awesome jonah thank you so much for joining the show that's it for this week ladies and gentlemen we'll see you next week take care